Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, Hot 107.9. Of course, it's me, A-Town, Manny Supreme, here for another edition of Not Your Average Podcast. And one of my favorite producers of all time since Moses himself, ATL Jacob, is in the building. You got to give yourself a round of applause for that one, my boy. You going to dab me? Yeah, you going to leave me hanging oh. on it? Okay, okay, okay. How you feeling, man? I feel good. I always feel good. First off, you got the Versace zone, FBG chain, all black with the, with the boot. How, Talk to me about your, your style. Before we even get into the music, ring on. You came in the hot studio and you didn't come to play with him today, huh? <laughs> you know, it's a Wicked Money family takeover, so. Yeah. You know, the most wicked, you know, our thing is black. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. So, I mean, let's talk about it. From musical influences, the first getting started. For the people who don't know ATL, Jacob, if you heard that drop, my mama know that drop when the song come on. Talk about where you're from. What were some early musical influences? How did ATL, Jacob, get his start with music? Well, from the south side of Atlanta, you know, what college, part? college Park. Come on yeah. now. Wait, like near the Marty train station or like? No, the other side by Rick Ross House. Oh, right. okay, okay, like near Fayetteville somewhere. No, 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 it's the old National. The old Na where the Shell at? Yeah, right, right, yeah, Mercedes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm Mercedes. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha, there. gotcha, so, gotcha. You know, uh, a lot of early influences. Um, of course, the, everybody from the south side, mm -hmm. Walker. You know, you got Gucci Mane. Yeah. They say he's from the east, man. He's south side. He really from the south side. Yeah. If you know, you know. Yeah. So, you know, then producer wise, south side. Yeah. You know, the whole 808 Mafia. So For sure. So what high school did you go to? I went to Creekside. Creekside. There are a lot of, if you don't know, there are a lot of people in the music game right now who graduated from Creekside. Literally. That's crazy. Can you, na name a few for the people who don't know. Um, You got Eric Berry. Mm -hmm. Wait, in the music game or just general? In general. Okay, you got Eric Berry in NFL. You got um actually somebody I went to school with just got drafted into the NFL. Um, I wasn't close with him though. I uh -huh. forgot his name. Then you got um Pastor Troy. Mm -hmm. you got I forgot Troy did go to Creekside. Yeah, his sister was my coach. Really? Yeah. So what sports did you play? I hated sports. <laughs> so what sports? I ain't, well, yeah. I played like football in the hood and stuff. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Basketball cool. in the hood, cool, but like cool, cool. other than that, ATL Jacob never really crossed over to play organized yeah. ball. You got Playboy Cardi. For sure. This this. It goes on and on. Yeah. So talk about being from the South Side because a lot of times people just think Atlanta, everybody's the same, right? And yeah. you can even really tell with musical sound, you can tell when somebody's from the South Side, the West Side, the North Side. How were you able to work your way and be able to work and start building your influence on all parts of those sides? Man, just, it's just really, I was pulling my influence, you know, of course from there, but Outside, but it's just like I was just pulling my influence from everywhere. Like anything that I like, it's like I'm I'm trying to you know Do be it. in that zone. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that have an impact on everybody. Exactly. Everybody like different type of stuff. Exactly. So when you graduated, what was your idea? What was your plan? Was it school? Was it I'm finna get out here, just build my brand, be ATL Jacob? What was that next step when you graduated from Creekside? You was like... Before I even graduated, I was with Futures, running around with mm -hmm. Future though. So what, what, what year was this? It was 2017. 20, end of 2016, 2017. Mm -hmm. And what album was out back then? Was it... That's right when he put out Future, the Future. Self-titled. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, didn't, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't involved in that one, but mm -hmm. I was around. Mm -hmm. So talk about being around that early Pluto, because even though that's not... Early Pluto, that's when a lot of other people, like some of my, you know, Caucasian homies start being like, boy, you heard that new Future? I'm like, I've been listening to him since mixtape days. Right. How was that early Future when he started becoming really commercial? It was crazy because I was always listening to him and then, when he, I think around on his album, I stopped listening mm. to him. And why is that though? Uh, Me just coming like from my hood and stuff, you know, him commercializing himself. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't, you know, I wanted the ratchet yeah. and stuff, and he was going the other so way. Then once mind. he dropped Monster, came out Monster, it was like, you know, he back. Oh, he back. For sure. And I was back on him. Yeah. So from hanging out with Future, what other relationships did you build and were able to get connected with just being around, you know, FBG? Um, definitely Dirt. Mm -hmm. um, linked in with Dirt early on. Uh, we... We met in we had met at a future session. Mm. Explain explain the first time you met Dirk. Uh, it was me and Casino. Uh, I think we we had our own room at Future in the session. Cause mm -hmm. Future he'll book out the whole studio, so we had our own room up there. Mm -hmm. and then I think Casino was like, man, I'm finna Dirk to record. I'm like, man, you need to work with Dirk. He finna he finna go back up. So 
I don't even know how to engineer. So the first song we did with mm. me and Dirt, I'm, I'm recording him like I'm engineering. And so this is your first time really like recording. Yeah, he ain't have no dreads or nothing. He had a low haircut. <sighs> yeah, it was like 2016. Way back when. Yeah. So when you when y'all were recording, like, what was the vibe? Was it giving off? Have you been able to see? I mean, everybody's seen Dirk's growth, but to be recording him back when you know before the buzz started going, how was that flow? How was you guys chemistry? Um. He was like, man, this shit ain't sounding right. For real? <laughs> I didn't know how to engineer. Yeah. So it's like, um, it was cool. He um Did you explain that to him? Like, yeah, I told know, him I ain't no engineer. Time. I'm just a nigga in the hood who not, you know, do it a little bit. I uh-huh. just told him so he understood that. Yeah. So it was like then we just started linking up after that. Crazy. Start pulling up on him, going crazy. And so I'm pretty sure you and Dirk are sitting on a lot of songs. Are you able to give us an exclusive? How many songs you think you and Dirk got? Me and Dirk got in the vault. Mm-hmm. Um not too many, probably like, probably like, probably like around a hundred. Not too many. I always say not too many because, like, compared to me and Future, we got like you know seven, eight hundred songs. So let's let's talk about that. When you really got into the producing game, when you learned how to record, when you started actually working with Future on a musical tip, how did that chemistry go? Since you guys already knew each other, was it still like, oh, okay, or because you know a lot of times with relationships, you know, in the industry, it's like, okay, this is my partner and this is my work homie. How were y'all able to bridge that gap? Um, by just having fun, not you know, not treating it at work. But like, mm-hmm. it'd be sometimes he'll be like, "Man, we are working on the album." Mind you, like we probably like he'll be like, "Man, come on, let's do this album." <laughs> we'll make a whole album, and just put it on the hard drive. Like, like, like we got like eight albums just sitting, sitting like ready to drop. Eight, just sitting, like eight. Well, when I looked the other day, it was like I think it was like eight. Crazy. Like, How many songs on the track list? What's crazy is the song's not even picked out. It's just a it's whole just bunch of song that we did. Yeah. Now, how long like, will it take y'all to record one album's worth of music? Um, so there's never really a time limit on albums. It's mm-hmm. about the time of the vibe. So it's like, mm-hmm. what if we in this zone for like two weeks and that's the album? <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Does location matter? A lot of people say, you know, with producing and, and making music, you got to always change your scenery. Yeah, uh, it don't. I say it don't matter, but it's a heavy influence. Mm-hmm. What's been one of your favorite places to record at? Um, I've been catching vibes in Cabo. Mm-hmm. The first time we went out there, I was with um, Travis Scott working. Crazy. I made like, that's when I switched up my whole sound. And then I just recently, I was while I was sitting, it's like, I just made a whole nother vibe. And it's like, I think that's just my vibe right now. That's crazy. Cabo. So not only, you know, on your musical tip, you putting out music yourself. As an artist, your freestyle, I have to say, was insane. Yeah, you know, I, so I looked in the comments, people was trying to hate us. Oh, he wrote that down or whatever. I'm like, bro, don't, don't hate on Jake or not. He came in here with the Sachi's on. So <laughs> what what made you be like, okay, well, since I'm putting out a million number ones, God want a feature, Obama want a feature, I might as well make my own hits. How did that come out? Because um, I was rapping, you know, before I even started making beats. Mm-hmm. I was rapping in the studio and then, you know, I just took a... A big pause on it, just to really just do it the right way. Cause I'm more of a production guy. Even when I was rapping, like I was so picky back then. Like, mm-hmm. I'm still picky to the day. Like I'm picky on the beats I rap on. Like sometimes I rap on something with no drums, cause I'm so picky. Like, mm-hmm. like I like the beat, and it's like just I want to rap on just the melody. Yeah. And just really vibe with really it. Really lock in with it. Yeah, cause I'm just it's just about the vibe. So it's like um, So you was rapping before you started producing. Yeah. So what what year like what year and time frame was that? Oh, that was like middle school. Like, oh, okay. Way back when. Yeah. Young Jacob. Yeah, I was trying to sound like future. For real? Back then. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is before you, you I, knew him? Yeah, yeah, I was trying to sound like future and young thug, cause that's all I used to listen to. Crazy. And Migos too. I used to listen Migos to Migos definitely had the vibe. Being from the South Side, you know, when Antidote and Handsome uh-huh. and Wealthy came out, that was a that yeah, was, <laughs> Bando. What okay, what are ATL Jacobs top three Atlanta all time songs? All time songs. All time. Atlanta? All time. You gotta go March Madness for sure. For sure. For sure. Hear that in every club. You gotta go um it's uh It's kinda hard now that I It is kinda it. hard because it's like so many. You gotta go with um well for me. Yeah, this Atlanta your personal list. Freestyle by Lil Baby for, for sure. sure. National anthem. That's a net, yeah, for sure. And then you gotta go. 
Gotta go. Um, they should play that during Black History Month. Just the whole <laughs> yeah, month. <laughs> every school, every, every elementary school is just Pledge of Allegiance. It's a hard one because that third one's like so many. Like It is a lot. I'm trying to think. I don't even think I could feel that last one we saw. I don't know. I'm going to go. Uh, shit, really? If I Atlanta Alpine was shit. Coming from Atlanta, I'm going to mm -hmm. go for Wait For You. Got you. Now let's talk about that song right there. First off, congratulations on all the success is done. When you picked out that melody, I mean, were you already a fan of Tim's? Did you like know, like, out of all the songs you done made, that's the one? Was it a couple of songs you was like, oh, I could take this melody right here? Or what's crazy? Like, I I like to um, sample certain songs and turn them into beats, mm. just for me to listen to. Mm -hmm. But then this particular one, I was like, man, shit, let me just put yeah. it in the pack. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I did it, and you know. Just transpired from there, but I was I was always a fan a fan of her. Like beautiful voice, beautiful yeah. face, you know. Great energy. Yeah. So when you played the beat for Future for Pluto, was he like, oh yeah, that's one of the ones? Or how did he get on it? No, he skipped that first, but like he didn't skip it on like he didn't like it. You know, it just went the vibe. Mm -hmm. He skipped it, I think twice actually. Really? Yeah. What do you think made him go back? He was, I think the second time we skipped it, he he looked at me, and then skipped it. Mm. Okay. And when Drake got on, it was just like, yeah. What was your reaction? I knew it was gonna. You knew, it. you knew it was gonna happen. Crazy. Now, Definitely. Super Gremlin is another gangster hit song of the summer, twenty twenty two. Explain how you linked up with Kodak. How did that relationship come about? Um, I think he just DM me. Mm. We linked up because we were trying to come up with some ideas anyway. I just had him pull up to the studio. and We went crazy. Mm. Yeah. Crazy. What what is you guys' chemistry when you guys are in the studio? People, you know, I watch interviews and Yak say he freestyle and he'll come around and he'll walk in and walk out. What is it like being in the studio with Yak? Um, well, every time we we work, you know, he he really think out his lyrics now. You know, like really write them down. Mm -hmm. Cause he, like, um, I think I just I think the first day we linked up, we were just really just talking just about vibes and stuff. Just mm -hmm. like man, niggas be looking at writing down your lyrics as like. Oh, he's cheating on something. When did that become cheating? Oh, man. Ever. Well, thinking it out to be the best. Right. To really come across and let your fans know how you how you want this how you want them to feel on the song when they right. listen to it. Yeah. So other big names that you've been involved with, I mean the list goes on and on. Like I said before. Y'all catching him now, but Obama's gonna be trying to get a song from ATL <laughs> Jacob very, very, very soon. Kanye West, man, talk about that relationship. Is it true that, you know, his first time, you know, you meeting him, he was saying that he really liked your music? Yeah, like he was just like, ACL, even when I, uh, like if I see him, like if I just see him, he, it's all smiles and yeah. he'll say my tag still. It's like, that's hard, you know? Crazy. Describe your first time meeting Ye. Um, just a humbling situation, you know. I pull up on him, mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, it's Kanye, the big billionaire. So yeah. You been thinking some secret service men around. You finna think he got a big snipers on the roof. Yeah, you been thinking it's a big team, and it's like, nah, it's just us two. Walking out, walking out the hotel while he on his phone, and he like, let's go to the studio. Crazy. Just like you know, humbling situation because it's like, he ain't got nobody really. Like he got people with him, but it's like, at that moment he like, man, we we vibing, nigga, we chilling, like mm -hmm. we finna go create. So it's just. You know, just a humbling experience just to see that. Exciting. So you got your own label. It's coming out. You got one of your artists actually in here now. Yeah, Marco 5K going crazy. Shout out to him. Talk about it. What was your idea? Was it like, okay, I, I, I'm ATL Jacob now. One of the hardest, the biggest. What was one of those areas where you were like, okay, let me get my own label going? Um, Actually, that always been a thought. Mm -hmm. It always been like the plan mm -hmm. just for the step to where to go next. But. Uh, everybody on label like they were just the homies, like you know. Everybody, how everybody in the hood do, you yeah, know. Yeah. The homies that, who, shit, you see that they going crazy, so you wanna like come on, yeah, come be rich with us, yeah, facts. You feel me? So what if somebody's watching this interview right now on our page? What would be a way for them to be able to get ATL Jacobs attention to try to get signed? Um, really, of course, just go crazy. You know, mm -hmm. it's like. You know, a lot of people are overlooked until they make a little noise. Mm -hmm. And that's understandable. Because it's like, at the end of the day, it is something to prove when you're mm -hmm. trying to make it. You got mm -hmm. something to prove. So it's like, you know, 
Go do your thing. Exactly. Before we get up out of here, what should you tell your fans expecting new music from you? Any hits, any unreleased projects, collab tapes? What's on the way for ATL, Jake? Um, anything released on the Wicked Money family, just mm. look out for that. Trust me. Big time. Something you want to see. Every time. Not the usual thing, you know? You know, he got the, the dark, dark massages. We got the police lights on us. You still can't even see his eyes. That's a different type of money, y'all. We appreciate y'all being tapped in. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. We appreciate you for being tuned in to another episode of Not Your Average Podcast with my dog, ATL Jacob. You ain't leaving hanging. <laughs> this time, this time.